Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here. Today we're going to talk about an exceptional sequel to an excellent movie. It's X2, X-Men United. Tapes with talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Hello, Kevin. I'm extra happy to be here. <laughs> yes. Uh, we did the first X-Men, me, Johanna, and Kieran, a long time ago. Okay. And I went, we'll get back to these. And then it was over a year. We didn't do it. And then I went, oh, no, Hugh Jackman's coming back. I should probably go back and review some of the X-Men movies well, before glad. his return. I'm glad you asked me to be on this episode. Yeah. I like the X-Men movies. Yes. I knew. I know you were. I think you said specifically you like X-Men, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. X-Men yeah. Two is really good. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite superhero movies of all time, really. Uh, yeah. So we're talking about X-Men, too. I think the 20th anniversary was last year. Whoops. Oops. Uh, but yes, Wolverine is coming back in the yellow suit. Of course, I have my box set there of movie Wolverine with comic Wolverine. Wait, this movie's 20 years old. 2003, yeah. Whew, that makes me feel old. Yeah. Um, yeah, this uh, this movie was a big deal. Brian Singer returned. Uh huh. That was a director you used to be able to talk about without people getting creeped out. Uh like my phone, someone's texting me right now. I'm talking about Brian Singer. That they're mad at me for talking about Brian Singer. <laughs> Threw it in a box of teddy bears. Watch Patreon and figure out what those are. Yes, Brian Singer returned. Uh, why wouldn't he? That first movie was a huge success. Uh, David Hayter, who I think wrote the first one, and Zach Penn, they worked on different scripts. And then they apparently combined those scripts. Because that always works well. Yes. Uh, they decided uh, to leave Dark Phoenix for another film because it'd be kind of weird to go full on cosmic weird shit in your second movie, but they start setting up I, for it. I think, I think dark Phoenix, if you're going to restart X-Men at some point needs to be like the 10th movie. Yeah. Like it's the Avengers end game of X-Men. Not I get it, but I, it was a really popular story it, at the time. It was, but it takes so much to tell it. I know. To do I know. it well. Unless you change a lot of things, which is what they end up doing. Yeah. Yeah, so they you know they sprinkled in some ideas and they went with the story God Loves Man Kills, uh, which I read many many moons ago and I forgot to reread it before this episode. Have you read it? Uh, I, I read it a long time ago. Also, do I you mean, remember anything? <laughs> so the Striker character that's in the movie, yeah. was a was a preacher, not that a, I knew, that I remember. Guy. Yeah, and he is trying to you he's trying to build a replica Cerebro so he can kidnap. Professor mm. X and ha have him use the powers to kill the mutants. Gotcha. So okay. it's a similar, like the the overall plot, but let's make it a military guy because it's easier to hate on a military guy than a clergyman. I, I, I guess, yeah, you yeah. Know. Well, in this movie, that'd be kind of hard because you do have a very religious character, which I'm realizing now. I have an action figure for that Nightcrawler. Oh but yeah. There's just too many stuff in the way of that cabinet mm -hmm. right now. So just imagine what that Nightcrawler pi uh, toy looks like, and imagine it's right here. The bright orange pants. And the trench coat? Well, he doesn't have orange pants in the movie. The he... toy has very, got very vivid pants. Really? That I, as, as far as I remember from X2. The one I have, I'm looking at it right while it's dark no. over there. All right. Well, I, will... I could be wrong. Yo, it's screw it. I'm going to grab it, Kevin. Get it. Get We're it. talking about it too get much. It. You've got Kevin or Peg Warmers on. I'm yeah, like, you know what? It's the, it's the, I have the toy guy <laughs> here. I need to grab the toy. Get the toy. Uh, you actually, you know what? It's a little early for plugs, but while I'm grabbing it, plug your channel. Hey guys, I'm Kevin from Peg Warmers. Uh, I've done a few episodes of Hack the Movies before. Tony has been very kind and been on several episodes of my show. We tend to talk about movie toys when Tony's on the show. Um, every episode has a different topic, a different toy line, or something about collecting. Um, I show off things that I got recently. I talk about toy news. You know. Yes, I have the toy here. It comes with a little cathedral. And it actually has a hook, so you can put it on a wall. Oh, nice. And I used to hang it up on a wall. But yeah, there he is. Yeah, they're just kind of oddly uh, orange for such a dark film. Yeah, I mean, that is what he is wearing in the movie. But yeah, in the movie, the really lighting like and whatnot, that. you can't really tell. I'm going to move him right here next to Wolverine. There he is. Beautiful. Uh, now yeah. we don't need this Nightcrawler anymore. We have him. Yeah, get that crawler. out there. Get that out of there. Uh, but yeah, I guess that would have been weird if there's an evil religious guy and then you have a, like a positive religion. I mean, you could do something with that, but this movie was already pretty it loaded. It had a lot of stuff happening. I think also they wanted to go military so they could tie in Weapon X stuff because that's yes. another 
cool yes. part of the storyline to tell. Also, there was a war going on at the time. It, it was still relatively new. Uh, but yes, uh, much like the last movie, they cut Beast. Mm. He has a cameo in it. He has a cameo in it. Uh, Angel was also cut from the script. Apparently, there's a reference to him. Oh, really? So, from what I'm reading... I mean, there's a whole list on Strike yeah, okay, okay. of like tons so, of characters. What I was reading, they said that there's like an x-ray for his wings. Oh, that I might be. I didn't see that, but he, his name there, is probably in that there list. There's a whole wall of like x-rays from Weapon X at one point. Yeah, so. but it's... We'll get to that point, okay. but yeah, yeah, it's not for Wolverine; it's for okay, someone else. For someone else, okay. Uh, but I didn't see like wings, but his name is probably on that old big list. Uh, so they removed them, saved them for the next one. And there were more scenes with Cyclops and Professor X, mm -hmm. and the studio apparently made them cut it for time. And apparently, I'm reading here, and this makes sense. This is right after Halle Berry's Oscar win for Monster yeah. Bowl. So if this is if this is right, they're saying that they like made her a bigger character. Yeah, they made some changes to the end of, towards the end of the movie. Yeah, to give her more to do. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and they've also just dropped her accent from the previous film. That I, it might not have been a bad idea though. I don't think it was consistent enough in the first one. Yeah, it, well, she was kind of in and it out of it, weird. wasn't she? It's just a weird character. She's like, I suddenly don't have an accent. But there are a lot of inconsistencies in the X-Men movies. And we're going to point them out, and I will explain how they all make sense at the end, Kevin. All right. Remind me to explain that. I sometimes forget okay. to circle back to things. And then they were also going to have the Sentinels cut them from the script. Now, That's this a is a big one. nightmare. Yeah. Sentinels, like. Yeah. Now, this is a big one. They were going to have the Danger Room, and they, like, started building it. They designed it and everything. Would have been cool. In the hallway... When they're in the X Mansion hallway, you do see a door, and apparently they do have the words "danger" written on it, and that's like all you get in this movie. They never, and like X Men Three did the danger Has a room, danger room scene, but yeah. it wasn't as cool. And then what was it? Freaking Apocalypse at the very end, of, or no, the very end of Days of Future Past. They show them, yeah, or no, Apocalypse at the very the end of Apocalypse. Okay. They have the danger room and just ends. They never. I really wish we got more out of the danger room. Well, they, they spend so much time, like, saving the world in the movies. It's yeah. hard to have time for them to, like, practice and do yeah. that kind of stuff. But in the comic book, where, like, you don't – the pacing is very different in a graphic yeah. story. And you can have the X-Men, like, practicing to get a little bit of storyline out there. And then, like, the crisis happens on page yeah. three – and they go off and have their adventure. If they are, well, they are rebooting it if the MCU doesn't crash and burn. Because I know they've shown up in the Marvels. Uh, Kelsey Grammer is still Beast. Right, but now right. CGI, apparently. I still haven't seen Ooh. it. But I, it, the minute that movie was out, it was all over X. So I saw yeah, yeah. a million pictures. But uh, the Danger Room, if we're going to reboot X-Men, and we're not lingering on the origin stories as much as older superhero movies did... That'd be a good place to show the team and introduce their powers yes, real you early do on. do it real quick. Like, okay, that's what that guy does, yes. and that's what she does, and that, okay, got it. That one goes through walls. That one has nine. Yes. It, that guy makes ice. Is that way you don't have to do, like, what they do in these movies, which is fine for the time yes. because general audiences didn't know much about the X-Men. Right. Now we get it. Like, okay, they all have powers. What's that guy's thing? I'm not going to be impressed like I was 20 years ago. Just like, okay, he shoots beams. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Then they have this. I I looked everywhere for this. I'll look even harder. But apparently Hugh Jackman's stuntman, Brian Singer, liked his look. So they shot like a cameo with Gambit and they had him be Gambit. So okay. what what I had saw was that apparently they, they were going to show Gambit and Beast suffering the effects of Professor X trying to kill the mutants. I heard that's where, like, Beast would have started mutating. He would have mutated, like, like he couldn't control his power, and apparently Gambit's, like, yeah. energy thing was going to flare up. Gotcha. But it was, like, shot from the back, so they weren't, weren't like, Well, he's a stunt that. man. They weren't stuck with that guy as the actor. Yeah, that made sense. But, you know, you'd go, you, anybody that knew X-Men would be like, oh, that's Gambit, he's playing cards, and then yeah, energy yeah. comes out of his hands, okay. Yeah, but what, there's, what I'm reading here is that they actually shot it, but I, I haven't it. seen anything. I'll hunt for it yeah, if I've, it exists. I've never seen the footage, but I've heard that same rumor. Yeah, there, there are things that were shot that just never seen the light of day. Uh, and then John Ottman did the score for the film, and he also co-edited the film, which is what he does again in Superman Returns, which we reviewed, uh, and his score for this is amazing. 
This he like it sounds enough like the first movie score, but he just like he tweaks it a little bit and just really ups the ante on it. It's so it's probably one of my favorite superhero soundtracks. Yeah, it's good. I yeah, really minus like, like John Williams Superman and uh, Danny Elfman and Hans Zimmer's Batman scores. Like this one is really really good. I'm gonna be humming it all week long. <laughs> Because yeah. then every time I hum it, it then turns into it, the cartoon it sounds, theme. It, it, it has a similarity to it. You know, yeah. it's not the same, but it has a similarity to it. Like a, yeah. a little bit of the same vein. When did you see this? I saw it in theaters opening weekend. And my friends and I smuggled in a whole lot of Taco Bell to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and we ate Taco Bell and watched it in the theater. I um I love the first movie. Mm. It was uh, one of the first DVDs I had. I bought it used from Blockbuster on VHS. The first one. Oh no, I know that Kevin. Oh, you have my copy. It's here. either it's either that is it one this one there? right here? That is yours. X two. Oh, this is my copy of X two. Yeah, I look, it's got my initials on the top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either this tape or that tape is yours. One of these X Men One tapes are yours, but X Men One was one of the first DVDs I ever got. Okay, and I explained it in the first movie. That's where it had like the extended version of the movie that yeah. would cut to like the raw, unedited stuff. Uh, so yeah, I was like, because I love the cartoon, I was real into the movie. Couldn't wait for the second film. Didn't get a chance to see it in theaters. Mm. This is the only X Men movie I've never seen in theaters, and it's the best fucking one. I think one. the first one was the only one I didn't see in theaters. Really, yeah. I. It's the only one I didn't see. Mm. Kevin, I'm one of the five people who saw New Mutants in theaters, but I didn't see X2, X-Men United. It's true, I didn't see New Mutants in the theater. Then I got the DVD around like Christmas yeah. time or whenever it came out, uh, and I watched it, and I loved it. I thought it was great. I'm like, God damn it, I wish I would have saw that in the theater. <laughs> yeah, I think X2, like I, I enjoyed watching X-Men, the first one, like on VHS a bunch of times, and then as soon as I got X2, it was like, oh, this is the one I'm going to watch now Yeah, when I'm in the mood to watch an X-Men movie. Yeah, yeah. It's really, you don't have to do the introduction anymore. Right. Um, I forgot to mention, so those guys wrote the script, but then Michael Doherty and Dan Harris took over uh, and wrote like the final version. Michael Doherty okay. ended up writing some of Superman Returns, and he has since gone on to do Trick or Treat, Krampus, and then he did Godzilla King of the Monsters. Hmm. And now he's like, I saw his name. He's one of the producers for the Monarch show, the Godzilla oh, yeah, okay. show that's going on right now. So this kind of like Brian Singer like kind of like made this guy happen. Wow. Um, so yeah, let's uh get into this film. I'm gonna read the back here. Okay. I always mean to do this. I started doing it again. I gotta Not make a point to read the back of the box it's, every single time. Let's see how many X puns there are on the back. Following a shocking attack on the president, the X-Men must stand united with their deadliest enemies to combat a menace that threatens every mutant on the planet and possibly all of mankind. Patrick Stewart, Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry lead an all-star cast in this dazzling action-packed spectacle that is arguably the greatest superhero movie ever from Entertainment Weekly. And I even have two promotional Entertainment Weeklies from like when they were hyping the movie yeah. out. From the I'm glad I held onto these magazines for so many years, <laughs> thinking they'd be cool decoration at some point. So it opens up uh, opening narration from Professor X. Mm -hmm. Across the planet, debate rages. Are mutants the next link in the evolutionary chain? Much like the first film yep, did. Makes it familiar. Yeah, talking about uh, mutants and how they're struggling to share the world, and that's always been a problem. And at the time, I just thought this was random CGI because these movies open up with random CGI stuff. Like the first one was like all the swirling electricity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we see like this like human looking thing that's made out of stars. And I thought nothing of it at the time. But now looking back, knowing how the movie ends, I'm like, oh, is that them like slowly easing into like the cosmic stuff that's out there? Like a yeah. wink and a nod to it. Um, and then, yeah, you get the swirling CGI and X2, X-Men. I like that it's called X2. It was kind of an interesting move to, like, drop the actual, like, name of the comic it, and make it a subheading, X-Men United. It worked for Terminator 2. It did. It did really work for Terminator 2, so I don't blame them. Yeah, yeah then it opens up on a tour of the White House. Have uh, you ever been on a tour of the White House? I have not. So I have done that when yeah. I was a kid in, like, the, I don't guess, early 90s. My mm -hmm. family and I did it, and... It's kind of similar to that. You know, you get to see those portraits. Yeah. Um, it, it was kind of neat. Uh, but, yeah, you don't get to see much. You get to see, like, that one kind of foyer. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, you got to go. 
I couldn't go to the White House. I'd just be yelling constantly, just at anyone there. <laughs> like, why do you take my money every year? I don't understand. <laughs> I have been to DC though. We 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 bought the free tour passes off a of scalper. Oh. Because we got a better time slot that way than going to the place to get the like free ones. I want to be one of the crazy people protesting in DC more than I want to go on that tour. Because <laughs> I remember when I went to DC, I used to see those crazy protests. Yeah. And like, no, it's like it's cool, but like there were some that were like protesting just bizarre stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. Literally, they were on a hill. I'm like, that's the hill you're gonna die on. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So. <laughs> DC's a fun place. I should go there back there as an adult. Maybe I'll have more fun this time. There's like the creepiest, shadiest looking guy in the crowd. Yeah. Which I'm sorry, if I'm like during like security and stuff, I'm like, well, obviously that even? guy. Yeah, yeah, how did that guy even get in? Um, yeah, the security takes note of him. They're hearing all these sounds, and it turns out it's Nightcrawler. Uh, I like that he has the paint. The paint, every time he teleports, the paint like dissipates a little bit more. This opening is incredible. Ooh. Probably one of the coolest superhero fight scenes ever done. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's up. Yeah, it's it's pretty high up on that list. Like, they took a cool visual power yeah. and took full advantage of it and made it even more impressive than it seems in the comic. Yeah, I like, love the effect. I like, he explodes, but then there's, like, this residual dust, and yeah. then it comes back in, like, he's displacing the air. And he just does it so fast. Yeah. Like, he's, like, not touching the ground. Yeah. You know, he's just flipping and then he ends up somewhere else and then flips again, yeah. you know. It and was really visually stunning. Yeah, and I love the makeup on him. They added, like, these symbols to him, which he explains later. Uh, he is, his tail is mostly CGI, but mm -hmm. I think that works for what they're yeah. trying to do. I know he did have a rubber tail, but I thought that was only for a few scenes. Um, yeah, and he's just kicking ass. And I remember being, like, confused as a kid because I was like, Nightcrawler's a good guy. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh, did they change? Did I miss something? Did they change something? Uh, but I love when they're in like the Oval Office and you just hear them outside the room and then the door opens up and it's like that slow motion. Good slow motion. Not Zack Snyder pointless slow motion. I just love that slow motion where he's like taking out each and every guy. And uh, when he almost kills the president, I love that his tail picks up the knife for him and then puts it in his hand. Yeah, it, like, takes it out of his boot. <laughs> yeah, he takes it out of his boot. And then he gets shot and just disappears, and the yeah. knife says, mutant rights now. What a way to open up the film. It it really is powerful. Yeah, because if you don't know what X-Men is, right. you're like, oh, that monster is going to kill the president. What's going on here? Is he the bad guy, perhaps? And, and they picked kind of the scariest-looking yes. good guy to yeah. put in there in that scene to really subvert expectations if you don't know who the X-Men Yeah, are. and if you do know, it's interesting, because like I said, it's like, yeah, wait, he's why? supposed to be a good guy. What's going on? Yeah. Why is he killing everyone? Um, so yeah, incredible opening. Uh, and then we get Wolverine exploring uh, Alkali Lake, mm -hmm. the CGI map painting. Uh, not the best one in the world. Some of the map paintings aren't really holding up on a pond rewatch. Then again, I was I didn't get to watch this in HD because it's not on Disney Plus for some reason. I wore my Disney shirt. <laughs> they own Marvel and they own Fox, but this movie is not on Disney Plus. All the other X Men are most of them anyway, so I had to watch it. I had to watch the four by three aspect ratio, four eighty p DVD on my big four K TV. <laughs> you know, I thought it was bad when I watched like VHS tapes on my four K TV, but for some reason DVD looks even worse. Mm. Um, depending on the DVD, like newer DVDs look fine, but like older Old ones. DVDs. Yeah. I'm also wearing my turbo man. I, shirt, I like it. Which is also now Disney and Fox. Mm. I can't not see it. He has real hair and real sideburns. And then he gets to the front of the place and it's like the worst wig ever. And really obvious sideburns. The story is he had started filming, uh, Van Helsing. Right. And he grew his long hair out and he was clean shaven. They're like, wait, we need reshoots. So they just like pasted some side. I, I, what was the original footage that they couldn't use? Cause this is really distracting. Yeah. I, I don't know if they just were missing that shot altogether or yeah. some plot element they changed. Like was somebody with him and then they're like, oh, we want him by himself. I, I don't know. Cause he just, it, cause the shot we see it's, it's him with his regular hair on the mountain looking down. Yeah. And then it's reshoot wig him, and it's like everything's broken down. He can't find anything. And then I think his real hair comes back. So, yeah, it's, it's a very bizarre choice. It's it's very distracting. It's not Samurai Cop distracting, where it's literally the guy just has a lady's wig, 
And it's not Fantastic Four 2015 where the girl goes from natural blonde to bleach blonde in between shots. Did you ever end up seeing that? No, I didn't see that one. Don't, don't worry about All it. Right. You're fine. Don't watch it. <laughs> I mean, look up that picture of okay. how obvious the wig is, but don't the, actually the watch fan, the movie. The Fan Four Stick movie fan had, some four bad, stick, uh, yeah. had some bad wig things going on, too. In God, I would, we'll never see it, but I would love to see a director's cut of that and The Predator, mm. the one with uh, What's-Their-Face. Like that, though, Both those movies were butchered. Yeah. And I would want to see, like, what they was it because them. they were so bad or was it just stupid interference? Um, so, yeah, then we get to see the mutants at a museum. And they cut Sabretooth from the movie. Oh, I didn't know he was going to be in that. Okay. Yeah, I guess from the, on a script level. It's weird that he's not in this because he's such a big character to Wolverine. And they eventually go back to Sabretooth. And I, it's I wonder if they just weren't happy with how he turned out in the first one. Well, they didn't really do a lot of... I mean, he looked cool. He looked he okay. acted like yeah. Sabretooth, but he wasn't like a character. He was just the muscle. He's just the muscle. You could have developed him into a character. Yeah. Instead, they just cut him out completely. Because it is weird that he's just gone. It's like, yeah, but he has Wolverine's powers. He's alive. Where is he? I think he's in the tie-in video game they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, so the kids are on like a field trip. Yeah. Being supervised by the X-Men, their teachers. Jubilee's there. To and remind you that she exists. And nobody's actually paying attention to the kids, though. Like, yeah. Gene's having a headache, and Scott's worried about his girlfriend. Yeah. Wife. Wife. Professor X is, like, looking at dinosaurs or something. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at dinosaurs. And the kids are having a problem in the food court. Like, yeah. it's amazing. Well, here's the thing with Gene. Because um, there is a moment in X-Men 1, I think we pointed out in our review, like, when everything's done... Like, after that machine hits her, like, after she, like, gives, like, a little nod or something. Something's weird, yeah. So something in his machine awoken a further evolution in her, I think we're led to believe. I don't know how the space stuff. I guess they decided, whatever. They might not have planned to make yeah. it be a cosmic force or, yeah. you know, you know how they redo yes. everything. Yes. Um, It gets more confusing in a later movie, but we'll get to that another day. Uh, so, yeah, so whatever happened on Ellis Island has changed her powers. Now she can, like, hear everyone. And, yeah, she's like, having, like, trouble controlling her powers. Yeah, and actually. But if they're you, magnified. Did you listen to some of the things that she's hearing? She hears a lot of stuff that's going to happen later in the movie. Later like, in the movie. So there's, like, a time the aspect yeah. now that she can, like, hear things in the future, which is cool. But, yeah, even Scott's like, yeah, hey, you used to have to, like, concentrate to move a book. And now, like, the house vibrates. Which is a pretty funny reference because, like, Marvel Girl. Mm -hmm was clearly the weakest X-Man when Stan Lee wrote that. Like, yeah. she'd pass out from, like, lifting a key to unlock a jail cell and be useless for the rest of the issue. And, yeah. and then she goes on to be Phoenix, literally the most powerful, like, mm -hmm. force in the universe. So it's a kind of a funny reference to put in there, you know? <laughs> that is pretty funny. And, yeah, I, it's a shame. Like, I really like uh, James Martin. I like him as Cyclops. Mm -hmm. I thought he was pretty good, and... This is one of the scenes where he gets to act and actually do something. <laughs> I, I have one thing about his visor mm. that kind of kind of cracks me up because they're always big about superheroes like removing their masks in movies so yeah. they can really show emotions. But they made his visor so thin that you have no chance of seeing his eyes. So he's always like super expressive with yeah. his mouth. Yeah. Why didn't they make it wide enough that you could like see his eyes through it? Uh. So he could emote. Maybe it just looked it weird. It might have looked bad being that Well, wide. I know they definitely wanted to shrink him because they were big and bulky in the first one. Yeah, yeah the head part. But I mean, yeah. the, the red line itself. Yeah, why wouldn't they just make it bigger and like transparent? Yes. Yeah. Right, so you could see his eyes through it. I guess because it's not how it looks. Not that they care it, about the comics look. It didn't look. really look like the ones in the comics, though, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess they just wanted that just red. Yeah. I'm guessing line. that's what they wanted. It, it, it could be possible. They could have tested it out, and it probably looked weird. Maybe. I just always feel like yeah. he seems like he's trying so hard to like show everything down here. Yeah. Like you, you can see, you can see his cheeks like, <laughs> trying to just convey. He what's does. Going on with his he eyes. does do a good job of acting through. Uh, the a visor. lot of yeah, yeah. He sh um, what you call it? Uh, it reminds me. Apparently, the Michael Keaton Batman. They tried to do it without the makeup at first. Okay. On the eyes, and they were like, now nah, something's off. Let's give him eye makeup. And then, what was that? The Power Rangers movie. Didn't the director try to take the, pl the they visors They tried to have the visors out? open. Yeah. Yeah, and it just looked weird. And they're like, never mind. Go back. <laughs> They've pulled it off later in the Power Ranger TV show. They did have a season where okay. the helmets would like open yeah. up through CGI. And it looked okay, but it, it was just too weird for Mighty Morphin because yeah. they didn't do it in the show. Yeah, it was real bizarre. Yeah. Um, I don't mind his redesign in this, though. I think it looks pretty cool. I think he looks okay. So there's trouble in the in the yes 
in the Rogue, food court. Rogue, Iceman, and Pyro, aka Marie, even though they don't call her that, Bobby and Johnny, mm. uh, who was in Hills Have Eyes, the remake. I actually reviewed that recently. All right. Crystal and Kaylee didn't. I was like, you know what movie he's in? They did not know that he was Pyro from X Men, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're uh, Pyro's showing off a little too much. Mm-hmm. He's like dicking around with that lighter. I actually do like that lighter, the little shark design. Yeah, and he throws fire at the guy. Ice Man shoots the ice. And then I like that everyone freezes. Yes. And apparently these were like, if I remember in the commentary, right? These are like almost like circus performers or people who were tra- mimes or something. Yeah, yeah. Or like mimes. They were trained to stay completely still. Yeah. So they can uh, shoot this scene. Yeah. So they're all like this. I don't know if I could do it. Professor X slow rolls in. Yeah. <laughs> Professor X. He's the one freezing all their minds. <laughs> I think they may might have even used some of these people. The same idea. But in Big Fish, mm. there's that scene where he falls in love and time stops. And I think they also had actors... It might even be some of these same actors doing the same thing where they're just completely still when he's walking past them. Uh, so it's cool visual. I like that we see this power that he has because yeah, yeah. they use it again in yes, later it's movies. In, it's setting up yeah. stuff for later. When they see the news about like the president being attacked, they're like, oh, fuck, we got to get out of here. We got to roll. Get on the bus. <laughs> go, go, and I go. love that everyone just goes back to what they were doing. And the only person that seems to notice anything was the guy that got lit on fire for a split <laughs> second and then froze him. So, yeah, now they're all arguing, like, what will happen as a result of this? A mutant attack the president. That is bad for all of us. Uh, what was he thinking? What was he thinking? Why did he decide to do that? And Professor X is talking about how, like, I can't find him. He's moving too fast. Uh, he's trying to use Cerebro. Then we meet the actual villain of the film, mm. which I like that it's like a human villain. I thought that was cool. I think that it it gave it something different than the first one. Yeah. Like, instead of just, like... Well, here's the new head mutant that we have to fight. It they- reminds me of Lex Luthor in some of the Superman movies where he's like, I'm the main bad guy, but you're going to fight this monster or this Superman, this evil Superman. <laughs> but no, and I love Brian Cox. He's good. He's an incredible actor, uh, famously the original Hannibal Lecter mm. in Manhunter. Okay. Uh, go back and watch our What is the Best Red Dragon episode. We talk a lot about his performance. He's talking with the president. And then I love that they followed up on this. Mystique is still yes. being Senator Kelly. Yes. That's great because yeah. you, you can't just ignore those loose ends, you know? Yeah. No, that that's something they couldn't ignore. Right. I mean, the next movie ignores some things, but like this movie was smart enough to be like, no, we got to circle back to the Wolverine origin and we got to circle back to Mystique. Although there is a weird thing with her character later that I felt was just added in for no reason. And I do love that Stryker's like, yeah, you used to be really anti-mutant. He's like, well, I changed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he really changed, didn't you? <laughs> uh, and then we also get to meet Lady Deathstrike, mm-hmm. who was very different in the con. Yeah. <laughs> Played by Kelly Hugh from Surf Ninjas <laughs> and other films. So what is it in the comics? She also has adamantium on her bones. She has yeah. just, I think she just naturally has big claw fingers. I guess. And she's a bit of a cyborg, too, in yeah. the comics. Yeah, yeah. I I, I I honestly <laughs> don't know the full origin of Death Strike. I, I she, as a kid growing up reading comics, it was often like, oh, issue here, issue there. Yeah, you, you you know when you get to go to the comic book store, and then once the Toy Biz X Men came out, mm. I got to subscribe from the back of the package. Yeah, so for like two years, I actually got to read stories, but they were busy doing like Executioner song or some other oh, gotcha. thing. So all I learned about was strife. <laughs> <laughs> but I think. Her family is tied to, like, adamantium manipulation, but she is a bit of a cyborg, but she's also a mutant. She has the adamantium on her. For this, I was reading, like, they were originally going to have whoever Stryker... Stryker had, like, an assistant in the mo- in the in the comic. Okay. And they were going to fight her, but I think Brian Singer wanted, like, a cooler mutant. So they're like, who's similar to Wolverine, who's not Sabretooth? Yeah. I mean, Sabretooth wasn't going to be in the uh, waiting room with the Oval Office just no. sitting casually. No. Well, that, that's part of what I was saying with like, his appearance. They yeah. made him so feral. You can't yeah. just like. Uh, so, yeah, they went with Lady Deathstrike. I mean, I guess it's not comic act. I mean, we don't know what she's like. Not mind controlled. Spoiler. Right. So but they, they went very generic. Yeah. With it. You know, kind of how they toned down all the spandex costumes. Yes. she's But she doesn't even have really a costume. She's just in. She, she, has, she does have black attire, leather, basically. which I was confused in, when they were marketing the movie because she looked like an X-Man, X-Man, but she was a bad guy. Yeah, so Stryker, he starts revealing. He's like, yeah, Magneto told us all about Xavier's school where the X-Men are. And, like, you see Mystique as Kennedy, Kelly, like, wait, what? Why, yeah. why would he do that? 
Like, I know he's got issues, but he doesn't want you guys interfering with right. them. He definitely doesn't want you... Yeah. He doesn't He doesn't agree with Charles, but he's not out to get Charles, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, I do like that uh, as Mystique, uh, she's just like, hey, I want to meet uh, Eric. He's like, no, you can't meet Magneto. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. And then he, like, threatens Senator Kelly. And then I know they do it for the audience, but, like, I'm trying to think of an in-universe reason why Mystique is constantly showing yellow eyes. It's like, just, there's no reason for her to do that. Just to keep the audience paying attention. <laughs> so that way the dads that had to bring their kids are like, oh, that's not really yeah. Senator Kelly. Okay. Yeah. So I like that uh, Bobby is dating Rogue. Mm-hmm. I do like that aspect of like they don't know how to do the whole dating thing because yeah. he can't physically touch her. And I like that the other mutants who we learn is Colossus. They're like drawing the picture of him being like killed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like Rogue in this and the first one. Yeah. I know she's not comic book Rogue, uh, which I think even at this point, I don't think they did a true origin for her until like after this movie where they really went into her backstory. I mean, they, they did have the flashback of her knocking out her boyfriend when she kissed him, right? Yes, I think there was that. I was reading that, like, part of her origin never got revealed until, like, ten years later when they issued something. But um, I think people knew that she was a runaway. She could absorb powers, and at some point, she absorbed Miss uh, Miss Marvel's power. Right, and that's and when that's, she becomes super strong and can fly. That's when she gets the flight and the super right. strength. And when you don't do that, like, I, I'm fine with how they use her here, but then it's a problem in the third movie when they really didn't know what to do with her. Right. Here it's still working. I'm like, eventually they're going to have to figure out how to... As long as they keep her as the teen drama aspect of the mansion, yeah. it works. But once you put her on the team and she's on missions... Yeah, they didn't... And luckily with this movie, they didn't have to come up with a lot for her to do that way. But yeah, the next movie, like they were like, we got nothing. We have yeah. no way to do this. Like she, she's gonna go cry in a corner. <laughs> I'm like, isn't she like the main character she's of the last quit the team? Like that's she's like a very important yeah. character in the third movie. They're like, ah, forget about her. <laughs> we don't have anything for her to do anyway. And then she gets cut out of another movie. <laughs> Um, I bought that Rogue Cut Blu-ray, and it doesn't play in my Blu-ray player. There what? was apparently some weird issue with a certain brand Blu-ray player. Really? Yeah, if you bought the Rogue Cut specific Blu-ray of Days of Future Past, it just doesn't play on, like, Sony or something like that. Something oh, that's weird. bizarre. Something really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Look it up. It's, it's weird. I'll look it up. Maybe it'll play in one of my two HD DVD players. I should bring it over. I love that I have two HD DVD players anyway. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Logan uh, returns. Logan comes back to the school, yeah. Yep. And Rogue is excited to see Logan, which makes Bobby jealous. Gene is also excited to see Logan, which makes Scott jealous. I mean, Scott's got a reason to be annoyed. Logan stole his fucking motorcycle and then returned it on empty. And made a pass at his wife. Or and made anyway. a pass at his wife. Like, come on. Uh, Bobby should have less to worry about. But like, he's like an immature teenage boy who... Yeah, there is that. Plus, they also yeah. mentioned, I realize a comic that you gave me a long time ago fills in this oh, gap. Oh, really? Yeah, because they mentioned at the end of X-Men 1, uh, Jean goes, um, yeah, she took on a couple of your personality traits mm-hmm. while you were out. And I just realized, because there's a comic over there, and I think it's one you Does gave me. Does she swear me. and smoke cigars? Are those the personality traits? No, but traits? it's her like going feral and being really angry. I oh. thought it was my comic that was an adaptation of the film. And I'm like, wait, what is this other comic? Yeah, I, and I, it, it was stuff I found like cleaning out my house. And it's and literally like, oh. what happened at the end of the movie before the epilogue. And apparently she did like go, like she had a lot she of- she did absorb his power. She absorbed his power, but also, and they go into this in the comic. Okay. She can absorb people's like memories and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And personality traits. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, I don't think she's, like, into Logan, but she feels, like, a part of him. Well, she's the, he was kind of the guy that, like, a dad figure. He's the guy that kind of rescued her, went yeah. out of his way. So, you know, she's yeah. always going to look up to him. You yeah. know, she was her first, like, friend after running away from her family. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why Bobby cares. It's like, dude, you literally have the one girlfriend who cannot cheat on you. <laughs> like, it's literally, like... Like, like physically, it, I guess emotionally, maybe it'll make you sad. But maybe she, it's... like, physically cannot cheat on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would know if she was cheating on you. She would. Somebody's dead. She would get hairier. Claws would be coming out of her. And be like, did you do something with Wolverine? <laughs> and then we uh, we cut back to Stryker. And we see how he takes control of the mutants. That was another thing they had to circle back on. How is he getting out of that plastic prison, Magneto? Because mm-hmm. I remember at the end of the movie, uh, the first one, you're like, 
Well, he's definitely getting out of there, yeah. but how are they going to do There's it? There's a couple little things like Stryker's glasses. Are you sure his gla- he puts on all plastic glasses before he I goes I guess in there? Like, you have to when like, you go in there. There's screws in glasses to make the hinge work. Like, yeah, I guess they're all plastic screws. He's got special plastic glasses yeah. for while he's there. I'm a little confused how later on Scott gets in there with his stuff. Well, maybe he's got all plastic. His, stuff. Uh, they might have up. They probably did have the to whole update team their went suit. To all plastic yeah. uniforms or yeah. fiber, carbon fiber. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I like Magneto's giving him shit. The security guard, Mister Delorio, knocks him out, and then they show they're putting liquid in the back into their spine. Yeah. Is it is it acid? Is it truth serum? It's hard to understand. It leaves a mark. Yes. Yes. They explain it later, but at the at, for you're now, you're like, like, what is that? <laughs> So yeah, he eventually like asks some questions. So it makes you like open to suggestion and like you just you can't control yourself. Yeah, you're sort of like yeah, drugged and truth serum at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's basically like know? a truth serum mind control thing. When you find out who it comes from, it makes sense. And then Professor X just decides to show off Cerebro, which works different in this one. Before it took you to like a smoky world to find people, and now it's just like, oh, when you're in here, white lights are humans, red lights are Mutants. And in the first film, I thought only Professor X could see that, but now he's just got a hologram for people. Yeah, it definitely felt like it was supposed to be him seeing it in the first one. Yeah. But then he explained it to somebody in the second one, so it's like, oh, they can see it too? Maybe he updated it. (laughs) (laughs) Now it runs on Windows ME. Yeah, I do (laughs) like... Yeah, it it crashes. He kills... (laughs) Oh, he killed all of humanity because it just crashed for no reason. Blue screen. I'm sure Vista will be better. Um, I do like uh, Wolverine putting out the cigar on his hand. That was pretty funny. You will not smoke in the mansion, and especially not in here. <laughs> he's, I do like that he's like, I will make you think you're a six-year-old girl. He's like, you can do that. He's like, Gene will braid your hair. It's very fun to see them be that way yeah. together. Like, I don't, I don't remember Charles being quite that much mm-hmm. that way in the comics, but like, Wolverine's the only guy that gets away with calling him Chuck. You yeah. know, like, so I like a little bit of banter between the two of them. He shows them that he's tracking the mutant. Right. And he's like, why don't you focus harder? And he's like, yeah, I, if I did, I'd kill him, which is letting you know, like, okay, How this, this works. is something. Mm-hmm. But then he finally stops. He's like, all right, I got it. He's in Boston. But he's still looking for him later. It's a weird thing. Well, like, they know he's in that e- general in that area. area. Yeah. yeah. So get up there and then I'll tell you exactly where he's yeah. at. Yeah. Mystique pretends to be Deathstrike. Oh, by the way, I like when she, like, shaked her hand. I was like, hell, that's quite a handshake. Yeah, yeah. And she, like, finds out how to get access to Magneto. But then while she's there, she sees this other folder. But Which, by the way, the one folder has every mutant ever. Yeah, Remy like LeBeau is in there. Every X-Man is in yeah. there. But then she sees another folder for, like, Dark Cerebro or Cerebro 2. Yeah. And she's like, hey, what's this? She starts printing everything on paper, which I thought was funny. Um, did did, we, that, did we not did have it? flash drives yet to, like, just download it? It might have still been CDs and floppies. Yeah. I don't think we had flash drives in 2003. Zip drive, you know, 100 yeah. megabytes. Or they, weren't, they definitely weren't popular yet no. until, like, a few years later. And even if you had one, it was probably, like, a really expensive one gig. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least have one that was like eight gigs. So I like that the real Death Strike comes in. Right. Uh, and Mystique has to come up with something. She disguises herself as the janitor. And then you see her as the janitor walking past the real janitor. And I like that they just got twins. Yeah. They leg- just legit identical twins for the effect. Which it's I very was much cool. like the security guards in T2. Storm and Jean, they get to Boston and they combine their powers to get Nightcrawler who's teleporting around. Can't see house. Are you bored yet? I really like Alan Cumming in this. So I heard he got the part because he spoke fluent German already. Oh, really? That was like, I mean, one, they liked his look and everything, but yeah. it was part of like what edged out yeah. everyone else. And then we'll probably mention this in other reviews, but like people really liked him in this and he never came back. And there were lots of theories why he didn't come back. Mm. And then I remember, I think around the time Apocalypse was coming out. Where they put a new Nightcrawler in. Yeah, he finally just went on Twitter. He's like, I just want to clear something up. The reason I wasn't in X-Men, uh, any other X-Men, was because I was never asked. And I'm like, oh, he, someone didn't like him for some reason. I don't know if it was Brian Singer. Apparently he did not like Brian Singer. Okay. But Brian Singer didn't direct the other, a lot, some of the other ones. I do know apparently Halle Berry clashed with Brian Singer in it. She did come back for Days of Future Past. And then had to be 
they, it was the opposite of this, where they had to lower her character because she got pregnant, like, right before they started shooting. Uh, so, yeah, it's a shame, because every time I watch, it's like, man, Nightcrawler was so cool. Was good. And we never get this Nightcrawler, and we get, like, a young Nightcrawler who's not as cool. And X3, like, almost the point was, it's like, all of the X-Men. Like, <laughs> yeah. Every mutant is in this war. And, and it's like, annoying oh. they don't even give, like, a one-off thing where they're like, I think apparent maybe in like a novelization or something, maybe even that video game I have that's set between them, there might be something where he like he just didn't like the violence or whatever because he is super religious. Yeah. Like he's not the kind that would be out fighting. Um, but no, he's really good in this. I like that. I like that they use the wind and what to knock him down, and then Gene like flipping him around, stopping him from teleporting. Okay, Logan has another nightmare about Weapon X. Mm. We we hear Stryker's name, or uh, we we see Stryker's face in this one. Uh, then he comes across a mutant who apparently his power is changing channels when he blinks. It's a useful power. Okay, yes. But, I mean, I, it seems voluntary. Yeah. How did he, like, that seems like, all right, so some of the mutants I have a problem with. Not that I know the whole point is you shouldn't have to hide who you are. But then I look at him and I'm like, yeah, you probably could have slid under the radar your whole life, really. Unless... Every TV he's near changes channels every time he blinks, and he can't. Unless it's it. involuntary, but I feel like that'd yeah. be a problem if it was. It would be. There's a couple mutants. Like, I hate it what they did with Beast in first class. Because mm. Beast in the comics, he was a big beast, and then he became a blue tiger, dude. Right, right. But in that movie, he's like, my feet are a little weird. It's like, yeah, there's some people out there with weird feet. You could have been fine. Like, relax, dude. You're a handsome guy. And you're like, my feet are kind of weird. I'm like, you wear shoes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, this kid, I'm like, I don't know, kid. Just be like, ah, it's weird. TV's broken. that probably get you pretty far in life. Um, so we yeah, lost he, the remote. Where's our boy? Yeah. But Bobby's also awake yeah. eating ice cream because he's sad that he has he has a cute girlfriend that he can't do anything with. Well, I mean, that's a reason to be sad, I guess. <laughs> it is pretty sad. I also would have been sad. Uh, I do like the little bonding moment with him and Wolverine. I like he, he chills the root beer for him. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. Was it root beer or was it Dr. Pepper? Oh, that might have been Dr. Pepper. But he, I think because Wolverine they're... asks if there's any beer and he's like, this is a school dude. Because I think the Dr. Pepper product placement uh, did so well in Spider-Man. There you go. Because later on when he goes to Bobby's parents, he opens up the refrigerator. There's just a stack of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> so, so I think this might have been it a might Dr. Have been, Pepper. Okay. I just remember like blowing the ice into it. Yeah, that was really cool. I like that a lot. <laughs> Um, I do like when Iceman shakes his hand, he uses his ice power. Like, I feel like Wolverine would have been like, yeah, he could have just told me. I didn't, I didn't need the whole thing. I like, didn't I don't actually know. need the gold shoulder here. Dude. Like, dude, I literally just came from like the Rocky mountains. I'm, I'm really not in the mood to be freezing right now. <laughs> um, they're chit chatting and then, yes. and then we hear some noise. We do hear some noise. Uh, but actually, so that's cutting back and forth. Oh, right, right. Okay. So before that, Magneto is reminding Xavier who K William Stryker is. Mm. I almost said Curtis Stryker, but I think that's the guy from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> anyway, he tells him, um, he's like, I've been getting visits from William Stryker. Okay. It's like, remember you messed up saving his kid? And now he keeps saying, like, in Wolverine, you're trying to make up for it with Wolverine. I'm like, is he? Uh, okay, I guess. Um, but I actually really like this part because... It's interesting that they seem to know something about Wolverine's past when Wolverine doesn't know anything. Like, yeah. they know that Stryker's connected to Wolverine, at least. Yeah, well, they knew, I guess, because the adamantium. I guess so. Yeah, which I don't even know if Xavier knew that right away. That might have been something uh, Magneto revealed mm. in between movies to him. I really like this moment where Charles is like, what did you tell them? He's like, I told him everything. But, like, yeah. he feels, like, genuinely, like, sorry. Because he didn't, he wasn't going to. Right, right. He, like, would, like, he would not betray Charles in that way. He, not in that way. Like, he'll kill Charles to accomplish his mission. Like, he's fine with that. He'll feel conflicted about it. But, like. But he's not going to rat him out to the humans. He's Yeah, he wouldn't want a human to do it. Right. Like, that's the thing. He's like, no, I actually, I have extreme, me like, methods and whatnot. But I actually don't want innocent mutants to be killed as a result of this. So it's like, he'll take Charles out like he tried to in the first movie, but he doesn't want those kids to be killed and stuff. Right, right. So yeah, it's a real, and like, they're both incredible actors, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have to be an incredible actor like Patrick Stewart to get the role of Poop in the Emoji movie. They don't just give that role to everyone, Everybody, Kevin. No. <laughs> Keep forgetting that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, and then uh, 
Cyclops fights Lady Deathstrike for two seconds, and we will not be seeing him until the end of the movie. <laughs> At least he got to do something. I, I remember him saying, I want it like a fight scene because in the first movie, all I'm doing is like this. Yeah. That's all it's like, can we show that I actually know how to fight? I'm not just doing this the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, she takes him out pretty easily. And then Stryker's team attacks the school. They shoot that right. kid, those little things. The little I do like darts. Yeah, I like that the president's like, do not kill any kids. Oh my God. We do don't need to see dead kids, kids on the news. Yeah. yeah. The second actress to play Kitty Pride escapes the X Mansion. For a wall. <laughs> yeah, I like that she actually was really cool because she falls through the floor and then runs through the wall and just gets out of there, which I thought was cool. Um,. So, yeah, they're, like, taking out all the kids, like, as many as they can. There's lots of references, you know, siren screams. Yeah, so they wait. So until they trank her. Oh, Jesus, I just, like, punched the mic. Yeah, siren wakes everyone up. Right. And I do like the guy's like, ah, and he, like, shoots her in the neck. But that alerts everyone that right. there's people in the house. Um, this is when we get to see Wolverine going, like, batshit yes. crazy. Like, he, like, he's like, he's like, you picked the wrong house, bub. And then he, like, kills the guy. Apparently, they had to, like, trim. It got an R rating. And they had to trim a lot of this stuff down. But I love that he, like, stabs the dude and the guy falls. And you see the claw marks in the refrigerator behind him. And then he's like, are you okay, Bobby? All right, I'm going to go kill all the rest of these guys. And he just goes berserk mode yeah. on them. So I didn't know Colossus was in the movie. Okay. And, like, I didn't know that because they never say his name. He has no, I think, honestly... He has one line of dialogue in this film and the next film. Uh, so I didn't know that was Colossus. In the comics, could Colossus, was it he just always no, metal? No, he turns it on and off. He could turn yep, it on and yep. off. You know what? I'm, the Deadpool movies decided he was right, always Right, they metal. didn't want to bother with it. Yeah. Which, they just made him all CGI. So yeah, I remember being a kid not knowing who that guy was. Oh, okay. I'm like, oh, I wonder who that is. And it's an awesome reveal where he walks in and it like turns on and he like blows them through the wall. Uh, but that's all you see of it, because yeah. it was a digital effect. Correct. And it was probably yeah. tricky to do a reflective human. Yeah. It looks really bad in the next one. Yeah. Uh, they, I, I, I do know in the next one he did wear like a prosthetic, but it was meant to be painted over in CGI. Oh, there he is. The oh, that's the movie figure. version. This is from the third movie. Nice. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a really cool reveal for him. I think he looks really cool. He doesn't have the lines. It's mm. like this, that metal. Just sort of metal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool is the more accurate looking one. He also doesn't have his Russian accent. <laughs> and I like that he tries to help Wolverine. He's like, well, Wolverine's like, no, help them. Help the I'll take care of this. And then he comes face to face with Logan. Uh, Logan comes face to face with Stryker. He basically tells Bobby and Rogue. He's like, get the hell out of here. Yeah. But Rogue convinces Lo uh, Bobby to go back and save Logan. But I like that moment where like Stryker's like, I did not expect to see you in this school. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like uh, we learned that it's been 15 years. Which I think I might have said in the previous film. Mm. Uh, but he's like, holy shit. He's like, you have an age today. And he's like, meanwhile, I'm an old man. <laughs> By the way, Brian Cox, did you know he's in that 007 reality show? Really? No, I did not. On Amazon Prime, there's like a reality show. It's like okay. a game show that's 007 themed. Hmm. He apparently signed on to it thinking it was like a movie. Like a movie? Oh, or geez. show he didn't realize. Now he's stuck like, in a bad joke. He didn't show. realize it was a game show. <laughs> Do people not tell people this? I think people just rely on their agents too much. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, uh, I do like the wall of ice that goes up there. Which was real ice, apparently. Yes. That just seems insane. I thought, yeah, that was insane that they, like, shipped in this big thing of ice. 3,000 pounds of ice. Yeah, and then they blow so it up. So we can film Striker and Wolverine on opposite <laughs> sides. Yeah, and then they blow it up, uh, which is cool. But they get out of there. They take... Okay, I know... I know these movies like to emasculate Cyclops, but they take Cyclops' car, and then they show that he's an In Sync fan because yeah. that's like the. You know what? Maybe that was maybe just the Gene's, regular radio. Maybe Gene likes. Maybe that. it was Gene CD. <laughs> I don't like uncomfortable silences. What are you doing? So I just thought that was fun, and I love that they. I wonder how In Sync felt that they're like ah. Bye bye bye. Ah, change um, the channel. So they plan to go to Boston. Mm -hmm. He's like, Gene and Storm are in Boston. And Bobby's like, my family's in Boston. And then Stryker goes into Cerebro. and We're not going to check pieces. on all of the kids that are in the woods outside the mansion <laughs> with, with Colossus. Yeah. We're just booking it to Boston. I'm guessing Magneto didn't know about the secret passages. Because they say it wasn't on our schematic. So, because he hasn't been there in a long time. 
Uh, well, I wouldn't necessarily show everybody the secret passages either. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I I love this Mystique scene mm. with the security guards. So, it's good. It's really funny. Hank McCoy's on the TV. Yep. Beast is on the TV. And they do the funny thing where she's disguised as a human, but the human looks like Rebecca Romijn. <laughs> And I like that her dress is the blue scaly, like kind of like her skin, which I think is cool. <laughs> so, uh, she drugs the dude. <laughs> but there's two there's two lines of dialogue back to back. I'm like, this is great. Where the guy goes, what does he say? Um, I never hooked up with a girl like you before. And she goes, I know. <laughs> then, because he works in the plastic prison, she goes to unzip, unzip his thing and it's Velcro. And she's like, Velcro, nice. <laughs> It's just a really funny scene. I do also like that he says bottoms up and yeah. finishes the beer, and then she flips him over so yeah. his bottom is up. Uh, but this scene is weird when she, it's the CGI transformation. And again, it's that weird early 2000s rubbery CGI. Mm. It's, something looks weird, like, especially when you look at like Spider Man and stuff, which are all great movies, but there was that rubbery CGI phase of movies where I'm yeah. like, I, this is like tripping me up. I don't like this. Um, so, yeah, she, like, injects a shit ton of iron in him. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I feel like that much liquid metal in your body might mess you up. I'm not sure. How did she keep it liquid? That's a good question. Does it solidify? I don't know how this works. I mean, you can take an iron supplement, like, yeah. pill. I'm not a metal or metal Metallurgy, but, I, yeah. you know, I just, like, can't imagine injecting... Mm. A metal. If you know about metal, can you make iron into a liquid form and keep it in a syringe? If you're a doctor, if liquid iron gets into your blood, how much of it before it becomes a problem? I know there is iron in your blood, yes. but I don't think it's un <laughs> like, by the way, it's a big fucking syringe. <laughs> it's like yeah. As big as a liter. It's gigantic <laughs> because he needs a lot to break out. But, uh, but that was like the one thing where I was like, how are they going to get him out of the prison? And I remember seeing the previews where he's lifting the security guard up, but then I didn't see the movie. So it took me a while. I'm like, how did, how is any of this happening? It's also funny because she could have just incapacitated him and then looked like him and gone to the prison. But instead she injects <laughs> Wait, metal yeah, into him. How did she overcomplicate this? <laughs> Wait, that's a, she could have just went and knocked everyone. She could have brought metal in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, it, what what happens is cooler. It just makes less for sense. sure. It's definitely cooler from a plot yeah. perspective. You know, don't think too hard. Striker he puts a device on Xavier to stop him from using his powers, and he yells at Xavier for not fixing his son because mm -hmm. he was like, "You wanted me to cure your son. This isn't how this works." And he's like, "Fuck you." Well, and the funny thing is, is that if he built a thing to stop Xavier's powers, he could have just put the thing on his kid. He probably built that way after the Well, fact. I'm sure, but, yeah. you know, like... Yeah. He probably uh, built it to stop his kid from messing with himself. Yeah. And then was like, I'll build a second one for a yeah. Uh Well, we're about to meet his kid in yeah. a second. Uh, but, yeah, Jason, uh, he didn't get fixed at the school. He hated his parents, Jason Schreiger. Uh, he ended up, like, he would just give him, like, hallucinations. And he did it so much to the mother that she just went nuts and put, like, a drill in her head to get them out of her head. Uh, and then he calls him the illusionist. Uh, which I think this is a very weird interpretation of what's the X-Men character. He's mastermind. like mastermind. He's like the movie version of mastermind. He's very different from the comics. Yeah. I think they're just sort of like, Oh, we want to. Yeah. They're like, we want to take this element, this element from that, that character, from but that. not necessarily be that character. Um, which I get, cause I, I've read really old X-Men comics. It is funny that Mastermind is one of the original brotherhoods. Like, that guy's kind of a loser. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just I'm, weird. Some of the early ones, like Toad and Blob, and they're classics, but like. Yeah, I like them too. Oh, uh, man. It's just funny when you look at like what the original X-Men team and the Brotherhood team was. It's like S Scarlet Witch before she had her really crazy superpowers and Quicksilver. And, like, I don't even think of them as X-Men characters anymore. Yeah. They've become, like, Avengers characters in my mind. Even by, like, the 90s, they, like, the right. team, that team in the 90, late 80s, 90s became, like, what people thought the team was. I don't even know who the hell the X-Men are now. Uh, and we see that the, the mind serum eventually uh, wears off. So he puts Deathstrike down. He, like, gets over another dose, and then her eyes go all silver. 
Uh, but yeah, they bring Jason in. So I guess at some point, Stryker figured out a way to get close enough to Jason and fuck him up and like keep him incapacitated. It looks like they've taken part of his brain out. Yeah, it looks like they tried to lobotomize him at some point. Yeah, but they're using the fluid from his spine to make the serum to like... Control people. Control people. Uh, and now he will listen to everything Stryker says. Uh, so yeah, he's basically, he's going to use him to manipulate Xavier into using Cerebro. That's the plan. And then Xavier tries to like, stop it after he built a whole copy of yes. He didn't, he didn't break into the X mansion and have Xavier use the Cerebro. That's already in existence. Yeah. He built a whole nother one and brought Xavier there. Just think about that. Wait, because he had Xavier in his custody. Uh huh. He could have just brought him to the mansion. Yeah, and if you were planning to invade the mansion, you would think Xavier would be there and Cerebro would be there. Maybe he wanted to do it at a more secure place. Maybe. You know what? Because there are, they didn't capture all the mutants. There are some mutants around. He doesn't know, like, he has an idea of what the secure, it, it, it was safer to bring it. You know what? All right. You're right. Point in the movie's favor. Just a lot of work, though. It was more safe to do this in his location where it's heavily guarded than it was to do in a mansion that he doesn't know all the details of. He doesn't know what other mutants are like. There could be an invisible mutant in there. That's like You true. don't know. That's true. Um, in, in behind the movie magic, yeah. they filmed all the scenes in Good Story Bro. Okay. And then janked up the set. That's cool. And then used it for the other one. I always like when they did the Cerebro set because they never built a 360 one. It's just like a wall that they would keep moving because yeah. it's so uniform. Um, so yeah, he sets Jason up with him and I like that they stare at each other. <laughs> Bobby, uh, they go to Bobby's house. Bobby's a little overconfident and he makes out with Rogue for a second. I do like that scene. Well, one, he gives her, her mom, her mom's, uh, his mom's clothes from like the seventies. Yeah. I thought that was funny, but I like that they kiss and then she like blows out the, the, uh, the frost. I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. And then they go a little too far and he almost dies. And then he seems like upset. It's like, you know, like she couldn't have warned you, you more if she coming. tried. And he's like, you won't hurt me. It's like, why do you think that? <laughs> why? Honestly, why do you think that? Obviously that will happen. So yeah, and we see that like Johnny kind of resents Bobby's family life. He's looking at the pictures. We don't learn a lot about Johnny, like his character really. Right. But we know like we see that Bobby did have a good family. Yeah. Johnny, just based off his visual storytelling, based off... His angry look at these family pictures. I know I'm going to get better seats this year. <laughs> it's on the list. Uh, you could tell like, oh, he must have had like the opposite yeah, childhood. He's a little jealous of the yeah. two shoes. There's a cat. Wolverine gets scared of a cat. And I just want to point out, it looked like an old cat I had. At the time this movie came out, it looked like that cat I had. Uh, I do like that moment. He like shoots the blades at the cat. The cat's like licking the blades. <laughs> Bobby pretends Logan is a professor. I thought that's funny. Professor of art. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then he decides to just tell his parents he's a mutant. Like, I, I get why they want to do the scene, but it just felt weird. He'd be like, hey, I'm home for the weekend. It was like a surprise weekend. Yeah. Uh, instead, he's like, well, you know, I guess now I'll tell them all about me. I'm like, I don't think you should be doing that. Um, Apparently... Uh, Ian McKellen Magneto consulted on the script for that scene to make sure the coming out moment was a typical coming out. It does. Moment. Yes, I I have it. Like, um, because we get there for in a second, but yeah, it's this scene is probably very relatable to a lot of people. But before we get to that, Magneto's got to break out of that prison. Mm. Uh, Spectacular <laughs> he, fashion. He like fucking that scene is so cool. Of the blood just shooting out of the security guard and then the metal dis being displaced from the red blood. And then he kicks a guy when he's down. He's like, never trust a beautiful woman, especially one that's into you. It's like, dude, you just killed him. You don't have to like, <laughs> you really are a bad guy. I can only be like, I'm using extreme methods because I care about my cause. But then when you're doing like jokey one-liners and like demeaning people, like, okay, you are a bad guy. <laughs> but I like... Then he makes a disc out of the iron. He like, I love his little pose that he does. Cause he does kind of fly around on discs yeah. sometimes. And that was like the, the movie way of doing it. He's just shooting the balls at everyone. I thought that was cool. Um, I guess, I guess he got out of there. Some, I guess there was more metal at some point. 
He obviously gets his suit back or a well, new maybe version. Maybe they had that locked down somewhere. Maybe, maybe. I wonder how he did get out. Because when we see Days of Future Past, we realize like how far underground that is. I'm like, man, he's an old dude. I hope he flew on that disc all the way up. <laughs> There's an elevator somewhere. <laughs> Yes, then we get the parents struggling okay. with it, where they're like, oh, what did we do? And I do like the whole, like, that's actually the dad's fault. He carries the gene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, it is. Sometimes it feels like maybe it's almost a little too on the nose, the way they're wording stuff. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's probably relatable to a lot I mean, of people. I mean, there was a lot of X-Men comic stuff that was aimed at marginalized groups, like yeah. the Jews yeah. or people that were gay. Like, yeah. it, like it's, it was an allegory to those types and it, of things. And it changes. All along. Over, like I know right, people, as society changes. I look. I know people right now because there's a lot of like trans stuff in the right. modern comics. It's like, well, that is the new thing. Like, why? New, that's the new marginalized group. Out of like all, like I know a lot of comics. Not to get like on a rant here, are trying to like shoehorn a lot of stuff. But like X Men for me, I'm like, that's kind of the one that makes sense. Yeah. That would do that. Like it's it, the it, one that's done it the whole time. It's the one that's kind of been like that since the beginning. Yeah. Like I understand when they do it in other comics, it's like, what does this have to do with I don't know, Batgirl or whatever? Like what, what the hell is going on here? But with X-Men, I'm like, nah, I get, it. I understand why they would tell that story in that comic. Although it is a little weird that now Mystique is Nightcrawler's dad. Yeah. Did you hear about that? I did. I did. <laughs> I don't know. People are complaining. I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of funny. and pretty cool. Because if I mean, she can shapeshift, maybe she could have. I mean, I, whatever. I don't care. I, I honestly, everyone was yelling that day. And I'm like, that's pretty funny. I, I'm on board with it. Um, I don't, I don't read comics anymore. <laughs> they retcon everything all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure ten years from now we're gonna find out that isn't how it happened. Yeah, and I'd like the whole like, have you tried not being a mutant? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I get like someone in the real world would say that to their gay son, but like in the context of X Men, I'm like, you know, there's like in the, like literally like he can't like he's just has ice powers. You're stuck with it forever until the next movie when they figure out a way to stop it. And then the younger brother narks him out. Yeah, Strober Nightcrawler bond a little bit, hmm. uh, and I like that he points out like the carvings he has. It's like one for every sin. <laughs> it's like a your whole body's sins. covered. What do you count as a sin? Like bad like, thoughts. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, <laughs> if he stubs his toe and goes, God damn it, oh hold on, I gotta <laughs> let me look up the Gabriel symbol for saying God damn it when you stub your toe. <laughs> like I'm like, that's a lot of sins, dude. <laughs> like I think you might be a little hard. He on did a good toe. job on his back because you can't see what he's doing. And I, yeah, I was just, I'm just like, dude, you're Catholic. You know, you get those absolved. You can go to confession. Well, maybe you can't go to confession, but like because he looks like a demon. Well, no, the confessional is private. Oh, you know, yeah, just, just go in there and be like, hey. Paint your face and put on your hat and your long coat. No bamf one. in there. <laughs> Whatever old lady's in there, bamf her out and be like, hey, I did this and this and this. <laughs> um, just saying. I mean, they're cool looking, though. They're on the action figure. Mm -hmm. They're not from the comics. Were they ever worked? Because you know how, like, sometimes they like to retroactively. Yeah, I, I don't think they were ever worked so. in, though. Um, well, I know at the time these movies are coming out, I think the X-Men did have black suits. They did eventually go to that, yeah. But I don't know if that was... They might have already been doing something like that before And I don't the think movies. he was on the team at that point. Because really, Nightcrawler... He's kind of in and out, right? Well, he's moved to, like, Excalibur for a long time. I mean, I don't know what team he's on currently. But, oh, like, yeah. you know, in the 90s, they split the X-Men up mm. into so many teams. The, the core team already had a gold and blue team. Yeah. You had X-Force, X-Factor. Oh, you, yeah. You know what I mean? So he was in Excalibur, which was the British group. Yeah. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, makes sense. At that point, he probably wasn't even in the main book. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're bonding, and I like that. Like, I like Nightcrawler's perspective on things because he is religious. Yeah. Um, and he's just like, no, I love everyone, even if they hate me, I gotta love them. But also, he's like, I know people hate me, but when I was in the circus, they liked me. So he uh, he's had this weird exposure to like positive human interaction and negative human interaction. And he's like, well, I kind of feel bad for them. They don't really understand. And like, and storm just can't relate to this. Yeah. Cause we never really get storm's backstory. I, I, I assume someone was like, you're a witch. And she just shot them all with lightning. I have my, my, my head <laughs> cannon. I know it's probably different in the comics, but I'm just like in the comics. She was like a thief in Cairo, I think, which she, is what they eventually yeah. do in one of the movies. Yeah. Yeah. She can control the weather. She could just, like, destroy everything. Why doesn't she just, like, make the crops all grow really good and be a farmer? <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know the enemies that she hates. Why doesn't she just kill their crops? I don't know. Nightcrawler's interesting. He has every right to hate humans. And for some reason he doesn't, which there are people like that in real life. Okay. And then uh, the cops come, come a knocking. I like the whole, put the knives down. He's like, I can't, I can't. And I was waiting for the old ladies in Edward Scissorhands to come out and try to stop them. Like, no, those are his hands. Oh, we're in the wrong movie. <laughs> uh, but I like that he like, so Wolverine can put his blades in f- fast and, and slow. slow. He probably should have went slow mode for this part because he does them fast and he gets shot in the head. Which I know Rogue screams, and it's like, at this point, Rogue, it's like, Rogue, you've seen him survive, like, everything. Relax. He's going to be up in a minute. Like, fucking relax. Pyro uses this opportunity to go full beast mode. Mm. Because Pyro's just been itching to, like, burn up some normies. Yeah. He's in the school, but he's more leaning on the brotherhood side Mm -hmm. of stuff, where he's like, I fucking hate humans, and I want them all to die. But yeah, he, like, gets his lighter out, and he, like, lights everything on fire. And then the music sounds like Batman Forever for a second. You have weird <laughs> trumpets. Go- it's. Did you notice that? No, I didn't notice it. Rogue actually gets to use her powers in an effective way where she like grabs onto him and then she like takes the fire out of the cars. I thought that was cool. So I get that she can like absorb the powers, but like how does she know how to use? Well, I guess she gets part of their brain. Yeah, I, I mean, guess she inherits some, how to use sometimes them. Sometimes they show her in control in certain media, and sometimes yeah. not. Like in the in the '90s cartoon, like the first time she absorbed Cyclops' power, she's yeah. just like blowing ah! the ceiling off a factory, and he's like, "Close your eyes." <laughs> well, I, Cyclops' power is weird because I remember reading like, wasn't it like he could control it, but he had a head injury? Yeah, yeah. so like if she absorbed it, she should be able to control it. Yeah, but think. then they, I know the movies retconned it where he's just had it all along. Yeah, I like the idea because like. There's supposed to be natural evolution and stuff. What is the evolutionary purpose of just shooting beams 24-7? Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right. I like the idea of the head injury, sit, like, knocked it Damaged out. Damaged it, yeah. So, yeah, the X-Jet finally comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love, like, the cars exploding. I remember watching the behind the scenes, how they put, like, motors in them to make them, like, spin when they shot up and whatnot. It's a really cool scene. Uh, the X-Jet comes. They save all of them. Uh, back at the uh, base, Jason is tricking Xavier into thinking he's a little girl. Uh, now this is where a lot of Scott stuff got cut out. Yeah, Scott was part of like the hallucination. I think it makes it seem like Scott rescues Xavier, and he's like, "I'm gonna get you out of here." And then they fly to the mansion. I also think there was yeah. some like torture scenes with Stryker doing stuff to Xavier and Scott that got yeah. cut too. Yeah, the, the scene I definitely, the deleted scene I definitely remember is Scott taking Xavier to the mansion. Okay. And then that's when he finds so the little he girl. Thinks, yeah. Yeah, so he thinks in his head that he got rescued. Because mm. uh, in the movie, they recut it to where, like, he knows he's being tricked and then he falls for it. Because I guess his persuasion is so strong. Um, but he is like, all right, little girl, let's find all the mutants. Um, Make sure you find them all. Yeah. <laughs> then we get the X-Jet chase. Mm. Which is cool. The X-Jet was a little redesigned. It's a little slimmer in this one. Two pilots are going after them, uh, which I guess now they can track the shit, the X-Jet. The previous film, they said it was untrackable, but. I mean, it's like an SR-71 <laughs> thing. Like... Yeah, I guess I guess if you know to look for it and where it's going. But then like, yeah, Storm, she whips out like the most awesome power. She just makes a, like an army of tornadoes. Who knows what damage she's doing down below to everyone. <laughs> Down below is the sequel to Twister. They're like, oh, my God. Uh, But, yeah, I do like that she's using the tornadoes to throw them all off. My problem with Storm, like, they need to put, like, some reason that limits her. Like, maybe she can only do it for so long. Yeah. Because they make a point to show the pilot survive. But the last one gets to shoot off two missiles. And then I'm like, just make tornadoes again. Right. I guess she's tired. Have lightning shoot. Like, that's the thing where she's like... You need a line of dialogue to be like, I'm still working on it. I can only do this for so long. Yeah. Because there are mutants like that. Like, I can only hold this for so long. Because there's a lot of problems she could solve easily. And she's like, now my eyes aren't glowing anymore. I'm done. It's in like, the, why? In the, in the 90s cartoon, they would just have the, the people pass out all the time. Like, yeah. Jean would use her powers and oh. You know, like, <laughs> okay, oh, she, she must have used it all up. She's Yeah. She gave you it. need something like yeah. that. Uh, but no, we see, um, what's it called? Jean is using her 
uh, telekinesis, but then we see a little bit of the phoenix. Mm-hmm. Her eyes glow a little bit. And you, I remember being a kid being like, oh, shit. Because I didn't know the whole thing earlier with her t- telekinesis, but when I saw that like little like orangey flame, I'm like, oh, fuck, they're doing the phoenix, aren't they? I'm like, they're going for it. That dark phoenix in the cartoon, I remember that scaring me as a little kid. I mean, I'll probably watch it now and laugh at it. Yeah. But at the time, it was very scary yeah. that she became evil and whatnot. Um, so she's able to destroy the one, but then she can't destroy she can't the next. The other one either. It's uh, hard to fly a plane and use your mutant power at the same time. Yes. And then we get another awesome scene of Rogue just being sucked out. That was cool as shit. Yeah. Because then again, it gives something for Nightcrawler to do. He like right. teleports and grabs her. But then the problem with Nightcrawler is like, now they're crashing. They're like, oh no, we're going to crash. And it's like, why doesn't Nightcrawler just teleport all teleport about. you guys down to the ground? <laughs> it's the like, whole ship, maybe? Could he teleport the whole plane? I don't know if he could do... I'm not sure what his powers are with... I mean, obviously he could do his clothes and stuff. But like with objects... I mean, but, he does other people in the movie. He can do like other he can people. Storm through a wall. Again, is there a limit to it? Yes. <laughs> like the, the movie question. Jumper with telekinesis. Mm. They have a line of dialogue. I remember that movie when they were like, some guy tried to jump a whole building. He died. <laughs> like, it was like, he, he didn't make it. All right. I like him catching him. But then Magneto, who just happened to be in a field... Him and, Ma- him and Mystique were just for a lovely stroll through a field. They're like, oh, fuck, there's the X-Jet. Let me grab that. <laughs> it's just a, an awkward coincidence. Um, but this is where you get the X-Men united. Right. Because now it's Cause the now classic. Now the Brotherhood and the X-Men have to work together. Which is always a fun aspect in, like, superhero stuff. Recently, Aquaman 2, he has to team up with his evil brother oh, and man. work together. Uh, for the good of the ocean. Movie wasn't that bad. But the DCEU is dead now, Kevin. <laughs> it's dead. Um, that's a, the sad thing is, like all the movies that bombed this year from DC, like some of them are actually just kind of decent. But everyone was just tapped out. Who cares? Because you know it's not going anywhere. Yeah, like, it, it just kind of kills it. Yeah. Also, they have a bad track record. But like Shazam Two was like okay. Blue Beetle was fine, actually, like more fine than I thought it would be. Okay. And Aquaman Two was fine, but I just. People were like, ah, we're done with this. Yeah, we're on to the next thing. <sighs> Good luck with the rebrand in a few years. There's always two fun stories where the villains team up and then when the heroes have to team up with the villains to stop another villain. Um, which, wh- who did that recently too? Uh, Thor Ragnarok. He had mm. to team up with Loki. That was kind of fun. Magneto brings them up to date on everything. Yes. He's like, there's a guy, Striker. He does Adamantium. Oh, by the way, Charles kept that from you. Wolverine yelled at him later for that. Uh, he had a son, the son was an asshole. And then they're like, do you know where his base is? He's like, nope. But the guy's spying on us, Mike. It's like, I feel like Nightcrawler's spying and he's like, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so he's another one where 100% of the time he teleports. It's bam, bam. Unless maybe he just crawled up there like a monkey. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe he he's crawled up there like a monkey. Because I'm like, how did they not hear the bam and him being above them? Then I forgot he is a monkey, dude. He probably could just climb. <laughs> So yeah, they read his mind and they find out that there's a base underneath Alkali Lake and that's where the lab is. And then Jean, she gives in to her urges. She makes out with Wolverine. Mm. That's this, and this Wolverine, this one kiss is enough to make Wolverine in love with her for like five movies after this. <laughs> it's like, dude, you made out with her one time and she brought up her boyfriend, her husband. Like as soon as you were done making out, I'm like, I would not be a fond memory for me. <laughs> like, that would not be a fond memory. And then, like, in The Wolverine, he's like, I still miss Gene. Uh, like, dude, get yeah. over it. I love him. Oh, and the second time they made out in three, she was an evil, like, demon lady. Like, get the fuck over it, dude. <laughs> yeah, so she uh, turns him down. So I understand that they didn't want to do the Mystique being Nightcrawler's mother thing. Right. Where would you fit it in here? Like, it, There's the, a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Uh, so I like that they gave them like one moment together where he's just like, I heard you can like mimic their voice. And she does it. And he's like, why? And I like this. He's like, why don't you just disguise yourself all the time? He's like, so because we shouldn't have to, uh, which that's a nice little moment. I mean, for me in this continuity, I just don't imagine them being related in the film continuity. Yeah. And it's weird in the prequels when like, X-Men first class. Yeah, there's the guy that definitely is dead. There's Azrael, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or is Azel or Azrael? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. 
I think it's Azrael. And like, and then he dies in Days of Future Past, and she's sad looking at it. So it's implied, like, oh, at some point. But then when she meets him in Apocalypse, it never gets brought up or anything. It's like, can you guys just stick to it or just not do it at all? Storylines. There's a lot of loose threads. Yeah, yeah. Things that weren't finished. Because I remember the Apocalypse trailers, there's a scene where Nightcrawler's like, it's you. And I remember at the time being like, oh, it's his mom. But then it's like, oh, no, she's like a freedom fighter, like figure. Uh, Never mind. Anyway, this scene is weird. I think they just want it like some more sexual tension in this movie. But like Mystique wanting to hook up with Wolverine. Where does this come from? And where does it go? Nowhere. She she sneaks into the tent right. as Jean. Yep. Makes out, and then she reveals that she has the scar. Apparently, she can't shapeshift around that. Which she even says, she's like, no one's ever left a scar like, like you. That. Yeah. And then he's like, what do you want? And she, like, licks his ear. And it's like, does she just want to get laid? Was that, like, was attempted murder a turn on? <laughs> I'm like, also, isn't she, like, dating Magneto? Like... Is she dating Magneto? I'm implied they were. Huh. Maybe they were friends with benefits. Maybe. They had a casual friends with benefits, huh. no strings attached situation. I think so, yeah. Yeah, they're poly. Did you know that? Oh. <laughs> they're poly. They're the one poly couple that doesn't talk about it all the time. <laughs> uh, but no, it's just such a bizarre thing. And I like that he's like, tur- she's turning into the other girls. Then she turns into Stryker. Um, and I get that it's like, what do you really want? And the idea is like, he wants to kill that guy. But like, and what was happening, like, I don't think he wants to sleep with Stryker, like, Mystique. No. <laughs> Maybe, I don't Which know. It's funny because Mystique becomes Stryker again later in a future movie. Yeah. A young yeah. Stryker. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a bizarre scene. And then Wolverine's like, get out. And then that's the end of the Mystique Wolverine love story plot line. Mm. Didn't know what this amounted to. Probably could have just cut this whole scene out. Maybe could have cut that instead of some of the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe have that scene with Scott saving it, Professor Xavier and cut this shit out because it doesn't mean anything. Magneto, you really need the X Men right now. And you maybe not want, maybe don't want to get on their bad side. Instead, he sees Rogue's white hair that he she got from yeah. him. And he's like, oh, loved what you did with your hair. It's like, dude, can you just not be an asshole for five? Like, wait until. You do your plan, then you can be snarky. It's funny that Magneto is the snarky character in this. Like, yeah. The elder statesman of mutants is the one that's got all the one-liners. <laughs> and I love that him and Mystique are, like, giggling like schoolgirls. Like, hee, 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 look at her hair. Uh, but, yeah, then he has that moment with we, Pyro. Yeah. Uh, where he's, like, trying to recruit him. Like, he can, he can like, smell. He's like, no, this guy's more on my yeah. side than theirs. That's a good, that's a good scene. I yeah, it's a great like character building and showing yeah. how easy it is to like switch camps. Yeah, and to see you know like he makes fun of his helmet and he's like, well, that's to protect me from the real bad guys. Yeah, you know. And there is like there are there have been people who have taken like vulnerable people and manipulated yeah. them. And I like I like that he's like, yeah, I can manipulate the faint flame, but I can't control it. And he's like, you're a god amongst incense. If I was like. <laughs> If I was like a young, yeah. confused boy looking for acceptance, this I'd be is, like, thanks for making me feel good. This is the guy I want to hang out with. I'll kill the president for you. <laughs> like, I understand what they're going for there. That's how people get recruited into like cults and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool scene. I like, and Stryker is also super evil because he has the kids in the cell after being electrically shocked and he's like laughing at it. <laughs> and I like the dude's like, why do we have them there? And it's like, because he wants to know. Like, he's there so he can see them die to make sure he knows it's working. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty brutal. <laughs> uh, Nightcrawler brings up the limits of his power. Yes. He has to see where he is going. But I feel like in the opening of the movie, he was just teleporting in and out of those rooms. People say that a lot, but I, I wonder if you actually watched it really carefully, mm-hmm. if he could always see where he's going. Like, there, the, it, there, like, he doesn't go through a closed door ever. Yeah, they do make a point to say, like, show him, like, kicking doors open and then teleporting. But there's that part where, he, like, he runs down the hallway. The guy turns, and now he's down this hallway. It's like, well, how did he see where he was going? Unless yeah. he saw and he knew how far away it was. Maybe that's, but like, there's, something. I mean, you'd still run into issues that you could, yeah. like, telefrag yourself because somebody stepped into a space. Like, I know, th- I know the yeah. hallway size, but yeah. I don't know where everyone is in that hallway. By the way, will he... Die if he gets teleported into I don't know. a wall. Will he get or... stuck in it? Happy Harvey, you teleport he in and you'd be like, die. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know. How but... would you displace the stuff around it? You'd just be fused with it, be like ah. 
I think it was an old Star Trek where someone got like teleported and stuck in a floor, right? Yeah, I think yeah. it was like a next gen movie or something, like a teleporting issue. <laughs> Um, horrifying, horrifying to yeah. think about. So that's why he can't go in there. And then Wolverine's like, I'll do it. And Magneto's like, no, you don't know computers. <laughs> <laughs> like, you dumb idiot. <laughs> he sends him Mystique. Uh, and by the way, during this whole scene, I love that Wolverine's in his X-Men suit and they're all wearing their X-Men suits. I like, so I wasn't too hung up that they didn't look like the comics. I just like that they were in super suits. Yeah. And after three... With the exception of Days of Future Past and the future sequences, he never wears a suit again. He doesn't wear it in his spinoffs or anything. It's like, oh, kind of miss seeing them all in the suits. That's kind of the thing. It's kind of the deal with them. I think Wolverine might be the one, though, that does the most out of the suit stuff. Yeah. Because he does a lot of solo adventures and... Yeah, the character and like his car his costume has changed so much. He's one of those characters that kind of transcends the suit a little bit. Uh, so I don't need it to look perfect well, every he time. He has the unique hair. Yeah. So without the suit, you know who he is. Like yeah. if you take a comic version of Bobby Drake or Scott Summers or somebody and you just put them out somewhere, yeah. you need dialogue to be like, oh, that's Bobby Drake. Yeah. Oh, that's Scott Summers. Oh, well, maybe I noticed the red sunglasses. You know, mm. but like Wolverine, his silhouette yeah. in the suit and out of the suit has the same yeah. hairstyle yeah. kind of thing. So I just like that they're wearing suits yeah. in general, um, which they start to do again in the prequels a little bit. Although Apocalypse, I hated the... Like, Apocalypse, it was, like, not the time to do black suits again. It's like, right. no, you got to update it a little bit. And they do for the last scene. So, yeah, they send Mystique in there. And I like that Striker just knows. It's like, nah, that's not Wolverine. He doesn't make that facial expression. I've fallen for this before. <laughs> and her fight scene's awesome. She's like kicking ass. I like that little slide she does. It gives the finger as she's leaving. I thought that was cool as hell. And then Jason finally gets Xavier to Dark Cerebro. Right. He finally gets him there. Now they all split up. So they've been split up the whole movie. They combine. Now they're splitting up again. Gene, Magneto, and Mystique are going to Xavier because Gene's like, oh, I don't trust you fuckers. <laughs> you tried to kill him one movie ago. Fuck you. Uh, Storm and Nightcrawler are going to go save the kids. And then um, Wolverine is going to go hunt Striker. Also, I do like, we never see the result of it, but I like when the doors open and there's just lightning flashing. So yeah. you just it's just implied she took them all out. Stryker tells Jason to kill all the mutants. And then Cyclops attacks Gene. And I like I like Magneto. He's like, this is one lover lover's quarrel we can't get involved with. <laughs> uh, so this is a fun. Again, I really wish they didn't cut out all his stuff in the middle, but it is cool to see him come back as like a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, and him and fight Gene, him and Gene fighting, you know, helps. I think it helps their dynamic. Like, she finally turned down Wolverine for Scott, and she's proving how much she wants to be with him. And this fight starts a chain reaction that's important yes. to, like, raise the stakes even more. The, the ticking time clock of the yeah. dam breaking. Right. Which reminds me of Superman the movie. And what's it called? Richard Donner's, Richard Donner's wife did help produce this, so okay. I wonder if that is a callback. Uh, I love the ticking time bomb of the dam, like, slowly cracking. <laughs> Annoying continuity error. Mm-hmm. I've noticed this since day one, and it really bothers me. So Storm and Nightcrawler, they go to the cells where Jubilee and the kids are. There's a wide establishing shot of the cells, and we just see Nightcrawler in the back. He's in the dark, he's in the shadow, but he's there. And then we see Nightcrawler up there, and then the teleporting sound, and then he's revealed. I'm like, but I just saw him. I, I get it. They only had that shot. I get it, but like... That's something these days. I guess they were assuming people just wouldn't notice it. Just yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't notice it, but like I've noticed it since day one. <laughs> so it's really been annoying for me. Now you would super easily digitally paint over them like like that. Or just zoom the shot so it's no, or just use a different angle. But maybe they were limited on their angles. But like, yeah, now it'll be an easy fix. It might have been it might have been real time consuming to do back then that they were like, ah, fuck it, no one's gonna see. I mean, it. they missed coffee cups in game of thrones and things <laughs> that's like, right you know? that's right but now they go back and fix it right, right. um yeah so that that scene always bothered me uh i will say one issue with the movies like there's not enough weird looking mutants at the school right they're all just normal kids yeah because they're even scared of nightcrawler yeah. like in the comics there's like green boys and stuff <laughs> And this one is like the kid has like a weird tongue and that's like it. It's like, now nah, we need some cooler looking mutants. I know they don't want to do makeup for everyone. I get it. Um, so, yeah, uh, Jean, while she's being hit with the blast, 
This is the second time she goes Phoenix mode, almost Phoenix mode, and that's when she throws it back at him. Uh, and apparently getting knocked on the head makes you fine. Yeah. This is an idea they would bring back in Avengers. Like, oh, a space cube made you evil? It's going to bump you on the head. Fixes everything, apparently. Logan finds the adamantium lab. Mm -hmm. uh, but we see, so those x-rays, those are Lady Death Strikes. Right, okay. Yeah, because you see the hand with the claws. Yeah, and Stryker makes a comment about the adamantium. Yes, and he says, like, once you get it down to its raw form, you got to keep it that way, because when it hardens, it's indestructible. Unless you have a super hot adamantium sword and you're in a samurai robot, but we'll get to that movie another day. Uh, but yeah, he, I like that. He says like, I used to think you were one of a kind. I was wrong. It's like, well, I guess he didn't know Sabretooth existed, but anyway, um, or, so yeah. Or that there are multiple weapons in the weapon X program. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So she like, they have a fight scene. I love their fight scene. It's good. I love like when the blades come out of Wolverine's like, ah, holy shit. <laughs> And she just needles him throughout that whole yeah, fight. Yeah, she's, she's just, just like, bang, like bang, 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 bang. She's like slicing the shit out of him. I love like toward the end, his like suit is like all messed up. Yeah, it's one of the best like fight. And I like that she has his same power. So it is kind of a threat. But then also in the back of your mind, it's like, well, they both can't be killed. So how's this fight going to end? I do like, because this is a, a common Marvel issue of yeah. like, the hero fights the villain with the same exact powers. Yeah. I like that there was just enough different about these two, where mm. it's a guy versus a girl, yeah. three claws versus five claws. Yeah. Like, it's the same, but it's not yeah. the same. It's not just, like, two different colored variations of the exact yeah. same thing. And again, like, it, I know he, he fights Sabretooth in the first one, who does have his powers. I guess not as strong as Wolverine. That's my, always been my interpretation, but I could be wrong. It could just be the same exact powers. Uh, yeah. But in that one, it was on the Statue of Liberty, so there was enough opportunity to get them away from each other, which right. is when, which eventually what happens. He throws Wolverine, and then he gets shot. But here, they're in like a confined space, so there's no running away from this. There's like no, one of no, them, there's no distractions. Yeah, else there. One of them is gonna have to like end. Then they cut away from it for a second uh, because they have to show that Pyro wants to leave. Right. I'm done with this kid table shit. I'm leaving this X jet. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. And I'm like, I get it. I get it, dude. I get wanting to be in the action and whatnot. But also, you're not dressed for this environment. You should, you should not be out in the cold. I know you're like a fire guy and maybe you can warm yourself, but stay inside, man. Then we get the conclusion to the fight. I, I remember being like, how are they going to kill him? And they come up with a cool way. So basically, he injects all the adamantium into her. And yet, she does have a healing factor, but adamantium is unbreakable so she can't it's heal. like hardening inside her basically yeah. and like you just can't physically heal around it i'm sure in the comics there's a way to do it but in this there's like no way to do it she just like it kills her and i like that as she's dying the thing wears off so you actually like wolverine starts to feel bad he's like oh shit like her her actual conscience is there she's like oh no i'm dying and wolverine feels guilty i'm like what else is he gonna do right it's a very sad sincere moment and then there's a goofy sound effect. But then, and then we get another awesome scene of Magneto just taking all the keys off the cards, uh, grenades, just blowing them all, all up. The pins. And surprisingly, there's no blood over all of those walls. There's no like char or blood marks anywhere. Uh, so yeah, Striker's plan. It almost works. And Magneto would have been the only mutant left alive, apparently, because of his helmet. Yeah, helmet on. Yeah, but he goes in there and he stops it. But since he's an asshole, he switches it and then has Magneto like be Byron Cox and be like, hey, kill all the humans, which I thought was cool. Because mm -hmm. the whole time you're like, well, he's definitely going to betray them, but how? And I'm like, all right, that's fun. That's cool. So he switches it on him. Wolverine stops Stryker from leaving. He's like getting in his helicopter and he can't get away. Unchalking the wheel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really winterized. Like, it's, it's the blades are folded up. He's yeah. just like, oh. I gotta, get this all done. I gotta get out of here. Uh, but I like this. He reveals to Logan. It's like, hey, by the way, you volunteered for this shit. And also you were kind of an asshole and you did horrible things. Um, so, yeah. And he says, he says, uh, you were always an animal. I just gave you claws. And I think we debated this in the last one. How do you feel about bone claws? So, I mean, I don't know if the bone claws were in his original, original 
origin, right? Like, now, from what like I... when they created Wolverine, I actually think they were claws on a glove. You know, when yeah. he fought the Hulk, like I don't know. Well, here, here exactly what the plan was. But... Here's the thing: the bone claws came from that '90s comic run where Magneto took all the adamantium right. off him, and they were like, "Well, shit, he needs claws still." So they came up with bone claws, and then they've retroactively gone back and said in his origin, he had right. bone there's claws. Right there's that comic origin where you find out his name's James, James but, but Hewitt, the, but yeah. the kid that he's like friends with was Logan, and then yeah. he uses the name to disguise himself. But my problem is like in the movie continuity, like. In the first one, he says that it hurts whenever they come out. I'm like, well, this is like a natural evolution. It would probably be like natural. Like it, w- it would make no sense to have the blades come out every single time. There might be like natural openings for them. And then we see in the flashback for this, because he flashes back to Weapon X and yeah. you get to see him use the blades for the first time and blood is pouring out. So it felt like the in these two movies, it feels like those were things that were inserted in him. I don't know why they would do that, but they inserted it into him. And then they, I don't know, they went with the bone claws there. I just don't like bone claws. It just feels weird to me. The, I think the th- part that's the oddest thing about it to me is that I don't really have a problem that there were extra bones inside his yeah. body that they're cutting the end of him. But like when they come out and they're bones, they look like bones. Yeah, that you know what? That's my biggest issue. With animation, they look like knives. How, how does that work? Because I imagine they'd be like saber-toothed nails, or they'd be like ivory or something, right. like a what? natural kind of claw. Yeah, some sort of The claw. fact that their bones look so stupid. They look like bones, but once they're covered in metal, they look like knives. They would have to look... Yeah. Like the... the did, do his bones all look like knives now? Because when, <laughs> when we see an extra of him, his bones still look like bones. They're just shiny now. Like it, that part has never made a lot of I'm sense. I'm surprised they never did the bone, the adamantium coming out of him. Like in X Men Three, when it, well, my needle throws him away, I'm surprised they didn't do like the. Maybe just it's too much. It's too much. Um, yeah. I, so I thought I don't know. Bone claws bother me because in this movie it feels like they were added to him. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, he ties Stryker up. He's like, well, if we're going to die, you're going to die because the dam's about to break. And then I have it here. Nightcrawler uses Jesus magic to teleport inside the room. <laughs> he's like, I can't do it. And Halle Berry's like, you got to have faith. And he's like, okay. And he does a prayer and he gets in there. You're saying some of this stuff was added. So yeah, they they decided because Halle Berry had gotten an Oscar. Yeah. And Nightcrawler and Storm really didn't have that much to do in the movie. Yeah. They needed to increase their action. So in the comic, like Magneto works with the X Men up till the end of the mm. the story, but they wanted them to go their own way. Yeah. So that way, they were separated for the end. Yeah. And so, it's just sort of like we're shuffling all these pieces around. So who's gonna save the day? Mm. Well, we need Storm to have some more some more things to do. So we'll send Storm and Nightcrawler in there. Yeah, and it is weird that they're like, "There's a mutant in there. Uh, he can make illusions. Don't trust anything." It's like, okay, so the most powerful guy, Professor yeah. X, can fall for knew it. it. Knew about it. Knew about it, for it. And fell for and it. And they'll be okay. And Halle Bear is just like, I'm going to make the room really cold, and that'll make Jason cold, and he'll lose concentration. Like, oh, okay. I guess that works. But yeah, I like when they teleport them out. Like, uh, what's it called? He teleports uh, Storm out, and then he teleports Professor X, and then just leave Jason behind. <laughs> You got to do a thing where, yeah, like... We don't really want to deal with this mutant anymore, yeah. so we're just going to, you know... <laughs> yeah. We thing. assume he's dead unless we need him later, and then we'll be like... That is that is the thing. They don't show anything falling on him, right, so right. it's like, is he dead? I mean, I think he is dead. He's probably dead. Though. Again, there is a tie-in game. I played it a million years ago between two and three. I don't know if he comes back. Mm-hmm. I think Lady Deathstrike comes back, which raises a lot of questions, but Magneto gets rid of Striker, yeah. takes his helicopter, and they're like, hey, Pyro, jump on in. Uh, I like he ties him up to like a wall, and it's mm-hmm. kind of it's a little extreme where he's got like the chain across yeah. his face, like. What's... So the mutants escape and the helicopter's gone, and they're very upset about it because Wolverine knew it was there and yeah. was planning to use it for his escape. And if I was there, I'd be like, "Wait a minute, Nightcrawler, teleport us to the top of that mountain and storm when we're up there, make it a nice sunny day." That's what I said. Well, that's not a bad plan. Instead, they're like, "Oh, we're all gonna drown." Again, except for except for Nightcrawler, who's probably like, well, you guys are going to drown. I'm going to teleport to the top of the mountain. And Storm, who's going to be like, well, I'll just fly. Yeah. I'll just use the wind to get me up there. <laughs> I feel like there's a couple mutants in here who could have got it out pretty well. And yeah. the rest are like, what are we going to do? It's like, 
So I don't know. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. <laughs> See you later. Then Rogue, because they needed something for Rogue to do at the end. Be comes a hero. In the X Jet. Yeah. I, how she knew that they were going to be there and needed help, I don't know. She Maybe just... Xavier or Jean or somebody was like sending out a message and we don't even know. I I mean, who knows? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Or they see the helicopter take off and she's like, we gotta go. I guess Rogue could have been, or Professor X would have been like, Rogue, meet us here. Um, X-Men, to yeah. me. <laughs> so yeah, they escape. Uh, Wolverine uh, sees that Stryker's tied up. As if it's not bad enough that the mis- the jet has been hit by a missile. Yeah. Then Rogue has to like slam it into every tree <laughs> yeah. and mountain in the, in the whole valley. Like, yeah. oh, thanks, kid. But I really like this moment with him and Stryker, and he's holding the little boy with the tongue. Yeah. Uh, but he's basically, it's a good character moment. He's like, you know what? I'm not concerned with my past anymore. Whatever happened, happened. I need to embrace who I am now and the future. And he chooses the X-Men over learning his origin and whatnot. And he, like, leaves Stryker behind. He throws, he throws the, dog, the tag. dog tags. And I was like, good. You know what? It's actually more interesting that we don't know his origin and this was a good thing, and then for some reason they made a movie about his origin, and it sucked! Well, because uh, they were going to make an origin movie for everybody. Oh, yeah, they... X-Men Origin Magneto, X-Men Origin They Rogue, worked that in the first origin class, so they, yeah, they dropped that moniker really quick. <laughs> oh, man. It's like after Solo, a Star Wars story. You never saw a Star, Star Wars, Wars story, story again. again. Yeah. Like, it's not Mandalorian, the Star Wars story, like, it's just Mandalorian. We're not using that thing again. Uh, branding is important. Um, also, making a movie that doesn't suck and looks like an unfinished video game is also important. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, the bit damn breaks. Stryker's dead. I like him just looking up and the water coming in. So, Gene gets the urge to stop the water before it kills everyone. Because the plane is messed up. Because the plane is messed up. And again, the engines won't start. You know, and cause... again, I'd be like, hey, uh, Storm, make a gust of wind to keep the thing at bay and just Nightcrawler teleport us one by one. Bobby, can you freeze all the water? Bobby, do you think you can freeze? I mean, maybe that was a big task for him. I, I mean, feel like Storm could have made enough wind to deflect it, maybe. Or maybe like a little bit of everybody, a little bit of ice, a little bit of wind. Like- yeah. Just something. Instead, Gene goes out there. Gene's like, I, I gotta save the day. Yeah, they're like, the vertical thrusters aren't working. I'm like, yeah, if only someone could control the wind and maybe do an updraft. I don't know. That's just me. So Jean goes out there because she gets the urge to do it. She's got to self sacrifice. Yeah, she just, like, she doesn't, I guess she doesn't have to, but she feels the need she has to. Um, and I like that they're like, uh, Nightcrawler, get her, and like, not letting me. And then she, I like that she communicates through Charles, like, this is the only way I have to do this. Again, I'm nitpicking it, but like, actually, in the moment, it's such a good dramatic scene that you forget you about it. it. Yeah, the first time you watch it, it's exciting. If a movie's engaging and dramatic, you can like leave, unless it's like a glaring plot hole. You can be like, oh, maybe Storm just wasn't thinking right. <laughs> maybe she, maybe the stress made her realize that she wasn't using her powers to the best ability. I'll let that slide because it's such a really good scene. Everyone's acting incredibly in this. Um, yeah, and she stops the water, she lifts the jet, and then she lets it engulf her. But like, she does have that Phoenix energy, mm-hmm. uh, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so she says goodbye and she dies. Everyone's sad. Scott's crying. Wolverine's crying. They're bonding because they both liked her. Kind of awkward. <laughs> kind of awkward. Nothing to make two guys bros like yeah. losing the loves of their life. Oh, man. I'm so sad. My wife's died. Please, guy. I wanted us to break up. Can you hug me? It's like, oh, all right. Let's, okay. I don't know if that's the guy I'd be crying with, but okay. <laughs> um, they interrupt the president. And we notice Rogue is in an X Men suit. Yeah, so the president is giving a speech about the the threat and the monumentous and yeah. you know they're they're building it up without really telling us what he's about to say <laughs> and they interrupt. Yeah. This is a callback to like everything else in the movie because we see the storms come outside. Mm-hmm. Oh, that storm has done that before. Yes, the room gets dark and everyone freezes. Oh, well, Professor X has done that before. They all appear in there. Mm. Did Nightcrawler teleport them all in there? I think he did. I think so, too. Or maybe, like, the president also froze. We just didn't see it, and there was a passage of time. Yeah, that whole part's just a little bit yeah. sketchy about what happens there, but the X-Men are in the Oval yeah. Office, which is cool. Yeah, it was a, it's cool, and I like that they're, like, giving a speech. I think there was, like, a like a funny gag they did 
like behind the scenes where like Jean comes in. She's like, sorry, I'm late. And like uh, James Marsden steps off his apple crate. I think <laughs> I'm remembering that right. Cause he's always on an apple crate. Cause he's a short guy. Um, which God, I think in the neck, like in this movie, whenever he's like talking to like Wolverine, they're kind of like, framing them apart but there's a scene in three where they're walking side by side and they had to build a track for him to be the same size anyway they basically tell the president like look i know a mutant attacked you but it was because of a human attacked and we don't what we stopped it by the way us mutants stopped it we want to work together please. we found these evil plans of william striker yes i'm gonna be like please can you not like do the registration act and whatnot can we work with this uh, and none of this matters because he loses an election between movies. Or maybe that was his last term. Probably that guy. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm out. In like I'm two done. Years. I'm I don't dealing care. with this. I don't care. I'm here to get a Supreme Court judge in power before I'm out. I don't really care about any of this. Goodbye. So, yeah, uh, they leave there and they're all sad that Gene died. And then Wolverine lets Scott know. It's like, hey, she picked you over me, buddy. Scott's like, it makes me feel better somehow. <laughs> Uh, then we get the nice narration, which is from the first movie, I yeah, believe. Gene's delivering Xavier's speech from the opening of the first yes, movie. Yes, and underneath the water, we see the Phoenix Force silhouette. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then we were all let down a few years later. Even though I don't actually hate The Last Stand, I actually find it kind of enjoyable. The last stand has a lot of good stuff going on in it, but it's just too much. It, there's good ideas, but they one of the things they really fumbled was the Phoenix. Well, because they're trying to put just too much in there. Like Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix, I don't even think can be its own movie. Yeah, well, they tried it again years later, and then there was studio interference right, with that. Right, but like, like how Endgame, yeah. you know, is it's there's two movies there. Like, yeah, you know, Phoenix needs build up. Which they tried to do, but mm -hmm. then it needs time to develop it. You can't yeah. have her be the Phoenix and then not Did be Did you the end up seeing the Dark Phoenix movie? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll review it one day, but like I honestly, even when I heard about all the reshoots and everything, I was expecting that movie to be a disaster. And it actually was like, just kind of, it was actually okay. It was okay. The problem was like the second act, she doesn't do anything. Like she kills Mystique on accident, I think, but she doesn't do anything to really make her feel like a threat. That's where the movie fell apart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a great setup for a disappointing third movie because Brian Singer decided he wanted to do Superman instead and he was taking Cyclops with him and the music guy and everyone else. Uh, and like you said, they try to do too many storylines in the next one. Wolverine really shouldn't be the main character of the next one, but they kept coming up with a reason for him to be. Uh, he's but yeah, so we'll darn popular. He is, he is. But yeah, we'll talk about that another day. X two, still think it holds up. Still think it's the best X Men movie. I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, I have nostalgia for the first one too. So in my mind, I put that right after this one. Uh, but Days of Future Past is also really high up on the list. Uh, the first one suffers from being the first one. Yeah, there's so much establishing. Yeah. There's so much like sort of clunky stuff because they hadn't quite yeah. developed the world of the X-Men yet. Yeah. You know? But for the most part, I, I still really like good. it. Um, yeah, not that there's a ranking video, but yeah, this one and then Days of Future Past, all the Brian Singer ones, not counting Apocalypse, although that one's dumb fun in my mind. Fuck it, we're going to review a lot of these movies. We're going to do a bunch of these. Or at least... As many of the Hugh Jackman mainline ones before Deadpool comes out, all right? Have you reviewed the Deadpool movies? Eight years ago, I did a Deadpool 2 review. Oh, okay. but maybe, I'm thinking after Deadpool 3 comes out, I'll do a what is the best Deadpool movie. Mm, that's a good idea. I can just do all three of them in one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, X-Men 2, if you've never seen it, I don't know what's wrong with you, uh, definitely see it. Uh, and it, again, it works even if you're not an X-Men fan. Like, my family never read an X-Men comic. They... They didn't re watch the cartoon. I mean, they the cartoon was on. Right. They didn't retain any information. They weren't paying but attention to it. My like family loves these first two movies, so anyone can enjoy it really, unless you just hate Brian Singer for what he did in real life. Which I mean, that's on you, I guess. I mean, <laughs> uh, but yes, check it out, uh, Kevin. I know you did your plug early on. Yes, Peg Warmers. <laughs> yes, I talk about toys. Check Go it out. back and check out the peg warmer side. I think there is a playlist for There's our There's a playlist collabs, of right? the Tony episodes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Tony episodes. Tony episodes. 
Uh, yeah, and this year we're going to try and plan some movies together. I know we're trying to do Waterworld at some point. We're trying to do Waterworld. We have some other uh, toy-based episodes that we have planned. Some of them are movies that Tony's already reviewed. Yeah. Sometimes if we can sync them up, we will, you know. Yeah. Oh, I gotta, I'm got i going to finalize well, not finalize as much as I can for this year. Uh, yeah, keep note if you have any other X-Men mutant toys from okay. the movies. Um, but yeah, keep an, keep an eye out for that. Uh, join Patreon to, or become a channel member to see our uh, <laughs> unboxing we did, our mailbag video. That was a lot of fun. I'm staring at a giant box of stuffed animals that are either us or a reference to us. Custom handmade stuffed animals. You're going to have to check that out. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Goodbye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes. <laughs>